Hi, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to our webinar. Uh, the name of the webinar today is Switch Without a Glitch. It's basically about how to make a successful transition, career transition in the Netherlands. Uh, it will be a, a panel discussion, and we have our panelists with us, Maureen, Barbara, and Hannah. Welcome, and thank you so much for joining us. Uh, I think if, it will be a very interesting uh, discussion. We'll, uh, we'll do a round of introductions, and then we will start with a few questions that we have prepared for the, for the panelists today. There will also be a Q&A session at the end of the webinar, so please do ask your questions in the section, in the Q&A section. Uh, please let us know if your question is addressed to someone in particular, and then we will have some time at the end where we will try to answer as many questions as possible. Uh, where that is not possible, if you think your question wasn't answered uh, or wasn't answered in sufficient detail, please send us an email, let us know. We'll try to gather all the questions that are remaining and see if we can either answer to, to all of them or maybe create a blog post where we address as many as possible. Um, obviously, doing a, a career transition is a big topic and you know, each question is probably you know, very particular to your own situation. So we'll try to address the, the more general ones today uh, and see what is left for, for later. So let's start with a quick intro. Uh, in case you didn't uh, know, we are organizing uh, this webinar from Adams Multilingual Recruitment. Adams is a recruitment consultancy specialized in helping multilinguals and internationals find a job, mostly in the Netherlands. We do operate uh, in other countries, but our biggest part of business is in the Netherlands. Uh, we work with different industries, we work on different type of specialists and, and roles, uh, and I'm sure you'll, you'll get more information from, from our website as well if you want to know more and if you think we can assist you either as a client or as a candidate in, you know, finding your talent or finding your next career step. Um, a bit of introduction about myself. My name is Florin. I'm originally from Romania. I have a background in philosophy and public relations. Uh, back in my home countries, I worked as a journalist, I worked in real estate, and I moved here in the Netherlands about 14 years ago in order to complete my master's in media and culture. Uh, and then uh, about 12 years ago, I landed in the recruitment, which is basically, you can see that as, as a career switch for me because I didn't have much to do with, uh, with recruitment in the past. Uh, so I've, I've experienced that myself. Uh, I would say it was, uh, yeah, it was a, a very lucky transition for me. I'm happy to be here after 12 years and recruitment is definitely something really, really interesting and that I discovered that that, that suits me. Uh, and I hope with, with this webinar today, we'll get to maybe inspire some people and maybe some of the panelists can inspire with their own stories. So let's start with opening up with each individual story that we have today and then continuing with, with the questions. So. If you could please introduce yourselves, everyone. Um, I don't know who wants to go first. I can go first. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Barbara. I work as a business developer executive at Adams Recruitment. I'm originally from Venezuela with a background in criminal law and criminology. I worked as a lawyer in my home country for seven years. Um, and in 2018, I decided to move to the Netherlands. And I started to work uh, as recruitment and trainer coordinator, something very, very different from my original background. Later on, I joined Adams Recruitment as a junior consultant. So I was doing uh, as well recruitment. Um, in the meantime, I was also supporting a bit the sales department and I find out that this is really what I like to do, what I enjoy the most. So I have switched careers basically twice in my life until now. Amazing. I can go next. Um, my name's Hannah. I am a coach now working with career transitions and small, starting small businesses, but it took me a long time to get here. So uh, I started uh, with an anthropology degree and then I had a 10 year uh, career in advertising as a strategist. Um, I originally moved to the Netherlands for that job and then it didn't work out and I decided to change. Uh, so, yeah, now I'm working as a career coach in Uh, I work holistically and therapeutically, but yeah, have been through a lot of switches and work with a lot of people doing the same thing. So uh, it's really nice to be here. Yay. 
I'm next. My name is Maureen. I'm working for InView as a part-time office administrator. I have a bachelor degree in communications, but when I graduated, I started to work. Um, I got an opportunity in retail to grow as a manager. So I stayed in retail for over 10 years. Uh, after that, uh, came the kids and now I stayed home with the kids for about four years so that was a challenge to go back uh, into another career I wanted uh, so now I'm at InView and I will start also as a part-time uh, dance teacher Thank you all for the introductions. Maureen, you kept this as a surprise for the end. We, we had a, an intro session before and we, you didn't mention the dance teacher part. That's really, really interesting. Yes. Uh, okay, Something well, new. And, and really exciting as well. And the next question is for, for Hannah. Uh, you went from an advertising career to a, a coaching career. You know, would you consider it to be a true switch? And, and actually, how would you define a career switch? You know, what? What does it really mean to do a career switch? Mm. Yeah, it's a good question. And uh, I'd answer it yes and no <laughs> and be annoying. Um, but I think technically it was a career switch, like in terms of my title, in terms of the structure of my week, the type of energy that it uses, uh, the skills it uses. Uh, I also retrained to qualify as a coach. Um, but also, I'd argue that, no, it's not a complete switch because it is a natural progression of uh, the skills that I gained in advertising and also what I enjoyed doing, um, which was a lot of research and observ observing people and understanding people. Um, so yes and no, but I think if we go a little bit higher, you could define a career switch as anything that's about kind of changing or switching up the way that you work. So I'm gonna keep it open. <laughs> I like the three words you used to start with, structure, energy, and skills to basically bring it all back to, to what it means to focus on, on something different. And, and the next question for everyone, addressed to everyone, uh, based on your own experiences, why do people change careers? Why do they decide to switch? I think the main thing is you're just not happy at the place where you're at at the moment. And for me, I was missing many components that match my values, norms and principles that I was looking for in a job. So I didn't felt like I was in the place where I should be. Yeah, to build on that, I agree. I think a lot of um, the clients who come to me through coaching have got to a point where their career is just kind of happen to them and they suddenly get to a point where they think wait this doesn't match my values or the lifestyle I want or the time that I energy that I have for the rest of my life so yeah it's ultimately about happiness yeah yeah I definitely agree with Hannah and Maureen I think um in my case it was a combination of, of factors of course but I think in general when you are looking for new challenge for new learning and um, for a new adventures in your professional life uh, is the time when you start to consider maybe I, I could do something else. And on, on that note, Hannah, what advice would you give people on, on how to recognize if they need a career switch or a new job? Yeah, for this, I think it's about, I mean, you can answer it many ways, but I think that it's really about vision. Um, so I think if you feel like you can get enough out of your work for the next three to five years, you can envision yourself um, staying in this career and maybe wiggling your way into something else, uh, then maybe it's about just changing jobs um, within your career. Um, or maybe you want to consider a more subtle career change. So looking at something that's a little bit different, but maybe a little bit similar as well. I think that if you are constantly bored, constantly unmotivated, constantly going through cycles of burnout, if you can't see any vision, if you can't see progression, um, then perhaps you're looking at a greater career shift, career change. Yeah. And following up on, on this answer and basically combining the, the two previous questions, um, I mean, I have 
let's say, I, I, there, is there any situation where you think people want to go for something that's totally different because they need a dramatic challenge in their life? I mean, I was talking to a friend the other day, he works in a bank and he said, sometimes I just want to open, you know, a, a food kind of store at the market and just be there standing outside the whole day. Does it ever happen to you that people want to do something so dramatic and do they actually ever go through with that? Yeah, I'm, I think I think what's really interesting about that is what is that um, kind of dramatic switch or that dream trying to tell you? So if you're kind of saying, I want to pack it all in in the banking industry and work on a food market and do things with my hands, often it's more to do with like the level of stress and, or like the time that you have or the type of skills you're using. So it's more instead of the actual thing that you're kind of escaping to or want to do, what are the tangible parts of that uh, that tell you something about what you need or what you want. Clear. And, and once someone figured out that they are aiming for a career switch, how can they prepare for it? And which points should they keep in mind? Do they need to you know, take time off work basically to decide what you want to do next? Should you just quit whatever you're doing and take the time to discover the next thing? Hmm. Yeah, I think for this, there's so many factors, um, depending on like your finances, how much time you have, if you have kids, uh, if you can support yourself and all this kind of thing. Um, but I think there's three key things. Uh, the first one, which most people say and was the biggest thing for me is finances. Because if you're used to a stable income or you're used to knowing what you're going to earn each month, then it's very scary to think, what if this doesn't work out? And what if I can't support myself? So um, especially if you're retraining the cost of that as well. So I think you really need to think about how you earn enough to keep you afloat through the transition. Where can you get support? There's lots of things that the government do here uh, to help people who are changing or if they've started a new business, you can get certain benefits. And if you don't know answers to these things, um, then the first step is to think about who you can ask to help you find those answers. I think the second thing is fear. So taking time to think about what you're scared of. Is it the uncertainty? Is it the instability? Is it being good enough? Is it believing that you can do what you wanna do? Um, and you can do various things like working with a coach <laughs> to help you figure that out um but once you know your demons once you know your fears then you can plan and prepare to take them on and give them some safety and the final thing I think is fire so being really clear on why you actually want to do this what's driving it um what do you have that fire in your belly for is it for more time with your family um is it to have less stress is it to spend more time using a skill that you love using? Um, or is it just so that you can feel a bit more like yourself rather than being in a career where you're pretending to be someone else? So yeah, finances, fear, and fire. Beautiful triple F there too. <laughs> love another question. And to elaborate on that last question, are all career changes possible? Is, are there any limitations? Uh, I'm, I'm sure there are some physical limitations Mm -hmm. uh, it might be too late at a certain point to be a professional football player, for example, but what is possible? You know, where do you draw the line? Again, I think it's there's so many factors depending on the different aspects of what it entails. Um, I would just never say never to anything. I think we you most people have a tendency to block themselves from believing these things are possible anyway. Um, but yeah, it's what type of change do you want to make? Can you retrain? Can you financially do that? Do you have time? Are you in a life stage where that's possible? Um, but I mean, I've, I've seen so many big changes, like a designer becoming a food technician engineer, an events planner becoming a dog groomer. And I worked with a marketer who also became a doctor, like a full on uh, doctor. So retrained for about seven years. And they're not always easy, but I like to believe that there's always a way and it might not be straightforward, but if you plan and you take time, then eventually I think you can, you can get there. And extreme motivation sometimes. <laughs> well, yeah. uh, the next question for Barbara, are there any contexts in which a change is easier, you think, Barbara? I definitely think uh, it is. There are some contexts where changing career will be more easy. Uh, for instance, it's not the same if you are coming from a corporative uh, career and you want to switch in within the same corporative world to a different position or different responsibilities. Like, as Hannah says, if you are coming from marketing and you want to become a doctor, then there is a 
several steps in between that you have to accomplish in order to switch. I also think that it's very important um, to be in a supportive environment, to find a place where you are support, where you are motivated, uh, when you can learn and grow. Uh, but I think the most important context, at least to me, it was your own internal context. You know, understand that you decide to make a switch and to you no longer are this person who has this background or did this in the past. So it's also a bit of em forget who you are and embrace who you can become in this career switch. Mm. Um, and I mean, this is more for Hannah because I assume that you have a bit of experience with this. Um, when it comes to your salary, to, to your kind of financial package, um, do people need to take a, a pay cut in order to go for a job that is different from what they're doing at the moment? Do they have to sacrifice the financial part in most cases? Hmm. It's a hard one because I think the obvious answer is yes. And everyone thinks that if you retrain, then you have to take a pay cut. But I think that that we have a lot more transferable skills than you think you do. And also experience counts for a lot. So if you think of all the skills that you will have learned in the first five years of your career, of managing people, managing processes, understanding how, we, how a business works, that actually could allow you to enter a lot higher up, but just learn something new. Um, so yeah, I'd always suggest that people think about that first before they just automatically think that they need to take a pay cut. Um, but the other side of that is that when you take a pay cut, then it gives you this feeling of permission to experiment and explore a bit more with your new role and maybe takes a bit of the pressure off. So I wouldn't say yes, fully, but in most cases, maybe. And then to, to take that question to something that is maybe very relevant to what we do at Adams in, in recruitment, is it considered a switch when someone moves from one country to another? And if it is, does that also come with, with a pay cut sometimes? You know, if you would live in a certain country, your job is slightly different because maybe it's more local to the country where you move. Would that mean you also take a, a, a pay cut in that? And this is maybe a, a question for everyone uh, if they want to answer. Well, if I can jump in, I think you have to really be open and clear and honest with yourself with the challenges that are coming uh, with a career switch, especially when you change country. Uh, you will have to compete with people who has uh, their backgrounds in the, in the country. You have to compete with people who has experience in the field you want. So I think sometimes you may have to accept that at the first you won't be earning the same amount. Uh, as you was earning in your homeland or doing the job you was doing, because just you have to start to build up your career and your name and, and start to build up your image, your professional image uh, in, in whatever field you, you decide to go. So I think it's not necessary that you have to accept a, a, a pay cut when you decide to switch career changing countries. It may be, you may be lucky and you can find a job that pay you even better than what you was earning in your, in your homeland. But it's a reality that you have to face. Sometimes you will have to give a little step back to take impulse and go ahead on your, on your professional life. Yeah, and I think it also depends in what kind of new industry you will work. Maybe the salaries in that in industry are lower or higher. So, yeah. And then taking the, the image that you're referring to, Barbara, to, to the next question, uh, on a practical side, do you need to change your kind of resume and social media presence in a different way for a career change than for a job switch? Do you need to really puzzle things out differently in, uh, in those two scenarios? Well, I do believe you definitely need to update your CV, your LinkedIn profile, your social media presence, because you are now becoming a new professional. You want to go into a different direction. So you need to sell that to the to your public, either if you are selling your own service or you are hunting for a job and you want to go into a specific industry. I think your resume and your LinkedIn profile or any social network that you decide to use for this matter needs to reflect that new change and new challenge you are looking for. So I will say you need to focus a bit more on your soft skills, in your interpersonal skills, and how you can transfer all those skills that you acquired in the past during your previous job to your new challenge. So yeah, I think it's, it's important to update 
your your presence to what you want. Mm. I agree. Yeah. I have one point to build on that as well, because there's the image that you portray to everyone else around you who sees that change, but it's also a marker to you because I, I distinctly remember the day where I changed my LinkedIn title to coach instead of strategist. And I was like, yes, I'm doing this. It's what you're sharing with the world. So I think it's a real um, marker to yourself as well. Yes. And I think it's important for, uh, uh, to change your resume. I did the same. I redefined some tasks that were more in line with new, dub, uh, new job descriptions, of course. Otherwise, I think the new employees were like, okay, how can this fit with what we are asking for? So. And on, on that note, Hannah, what advice would you give people on how to make the decision about what they really want to do? You, you ended your last sentence with what they really want. So building into that, what advice would you give them? Yeah, I think it's really about creating intentional time to think about this because often, you know, we have these fantasies where we escape what we're currently doing and like, I could be this and I could be that, but it's not going to happen if you don't sit down and really think on it. Um, so I remember before I did this, I took myself on a little weekend away. I literally just went camping by myself and I took my notepad and I journaled and I wrote, um, I did quite a lot actually. It was a bit, <laughs> when I look back at it now, I'm like, oh yeah, there's a whole book here. But, um, yeah, listen to podcasts as well. A really good podcast to listen to is one called Squiggly Careers. Um, and they interview a lot of people who have moved through lots of different careers in their life. So it's instead of looking at a career as a linear path, it's squiggly and it changes. Um, also talk to other people because other people will know you. So you can ask other people, what, am, what do you think my skills are? What do you think I'm really good at? And it can kind of reflect to you, maybe something you hadn't thought of. But um, yeah really take that time to think about it do you think people should do that even if they are happy where they are basically taking that kind of rediscover intentional time and and use it mm. yeah something i actually love doing with clients is saying well you have an annual review that your company give you but what about if you did an annual review for yourself um i think that's a really nice tip actually yeah Really nice, thank you. A question for Maureen, how did you make your decision and how did you fight uncertainty? It was really difficult because I'm interesting in, interested in a lot of things and I think I have a lot of skills. So it was really difficult to think about it and make sure uh, making the right decision because for myself, I'm a little bit older so, and I didn't want to hop to an, into another job the whole time. So, uh, especially with my working experience in retail, it was easier staying in retail, right? Uh, also for growing in other positions, but I really wasn't happy uh, over there. Like I said in the beginning, I wasn't myself. I felt like something was missing. I was not using my top qualities. Uh, and that was like itching inside, um, giving me stress and feeling not happy. So I had to make a choice uh, to step into another direction. And I studied uh, communication and I never worked in, till now I never worked in communication. So it was uh, like, something I wanted to do. And now I can use some of those skills I learned during my study, but also during my time uh, in retail uh, into a new career. Um, yes, and about the uncertainties, I have to say uh, with a gap of four years on my resume, I will talk about that later. Uh, it was really helpful that I had someone from Adams that talked into me and motivated me, inspires me to look at myself and uh, got so much more self 
compassion and more self-worth like, yes, I can do it. Why not? I, I believe I can, um, I can do that job. So I will make sure I can do it. So I, she really hyped me up. And I really think that's important to have people around you that uh, support you in your choices. And you did it. Congratulations for that. Thank you. Obviously, all on you too for making this step. Uh, and I think it combines two of the things that we've heard from uh, Hannah as well about trust and about energy. I think with, when you combine the self-confidence with the energy, then I think that probably makes things a, a lot easier. Uh, yeah. Barbara, when you made the decision to, to switch the sector, did you discuss this with an external party to get more guidance? Was, was this beneficial? I did not discuss anything with anybody, to be very honest. Um, I think this is a very personal decision and you are the only one who knows which your goals uh, in the professional uh, side are uh, in the long and short term. Uh, you are the only one who know yourself good enough to th see and, and, and really be, I think it's very important to be honest with yourself and say to yourself, look, this is something I really want to do and I'm gonna go 100% for it or I, I'm not sure. And I think for me, at least, you know, all those external noises and external opinion wouldn't have been really beneficial because at the end of the day, if I decide to switch my career or not, I am the one who has to carry on with the consequence, good or bad. So um, when I had to take the decision, I just took my time to analyze the pro and the cons to really be conscious, okay, what I can bring to the table uh, in a new challenge, what are my skills, what I consider are my strong areas. And based on that, I, I made my decision. And I think it was beneficial because it was my decision and only mine. And the satisfaction then was, was even, uh, even higher. Uh, and Maureen, what challenges did you face when, uh, when you were looking for a new job? The first challenge was Top was my four year gap on my resume. Like how I'm I going to explain that? I was a homestay mom. So will, how will they react on that? Like there are uh, people will have like their opinion about that, right? So I was like, how I'm gonna make this still a good thing? Because homestay mom is a, work, is a job also. So, and secondly, my work experiences don't match the, the new job descriptions I wanted to work in. So that was also a challenge. How can I make my resume fit uh, into a new career? Um, how can I make the experiences more relevant uh, for the new job? That was really a challenge to do. And thirdly, and I don't know if that's like, totally true, but my age, I thought it was a thing. Uh, should I have to compete against younger candidates who have the right experience and are probably cheaper? Um, so I find that really uh, difficult to, um, to challenge that, but I did it. You did it indeed, and I, I'm sure that many of the candidates and we, we encounter in recruitment would have so many of, of the same questions and, and self-doubts, and I think it's great that, yeah, they can see that it is possible with, you know, taking the right steps and, and just going through it. Um, it. It isn't easy, but it probably is a place where, where there are a lot of jobs available on the market, so the, there's no other time than now, I suppose. Yes. Uh, and, and for you, Barbara, on your side, do you have any additional challenges that, that you faced? Yeah, I think uh, it's quite personal and it depends a lot of who you are and how you manage the situations in your life. For me, it was really difficult uh, having a lot of previous experience doing certain kind of job. I, I had, as I mentioned, seven years working as a lawyer. I had my own lawyer office, so I was my own boss. And I'm a very perfectionist person and a bit unflexible in some areas. So for me, it was a bit challenging to switch that mind and understand you have to start from the bottom. You need to be flexible. You need to relearn how to do things. And you have a little bit like to, again, to forget who you was in your, in your past professional experience and remember like 
I decide this, I, I decide to go for this, so I need to relearn how to do things and be open to feedback and maybe even open to listen to someone who may be a little bit more junior than you in terms of years of experience working, but has more knowledge than you because it's a person who has the background on the specific field you are working now. And that, that bridges nicely into the next question for Hannah. What, what advice do you give your clients when they have concerns about you know, being overqualified or uh, accepting a lower pay for their dream job? Mm. Yeah, I think I think to Barbara's point, it's it's very much a personal decision. I think we have a tendency to look at the market outside of us or the other people in our company and start to think, oh, I'm just I'm just another person working here. But actually, you're unique. All the experience that you've had before where you are right now contributes to your value. Um, and I think in terms of being overqualified or accepting lower pay, there's some advice uh, from this woman's company. A community that I'm in called Upfront, which is run by an amazing woman called Lauren Curry. And uh, her mission is all about changing confidence and what confidence is rather than changing women or changing people. And she regularly shares this quote by a marketer called Cindy Gallup, who you might have heard of. And she says, just ask the highest number that you can say without bursting out laughing. Because at the end of the day, money is value. And you have to think about how do I value myself? How do I value my experience? Um, and let your kind of proposition to whatever company or whatever career change you want to make come from that space rather than what you think it should be. Because then the worst thing is, is that they might say no, or they might laugh at you. And then you're like, well, I tried. <laughs> and then you can negotiate, which is uh, what I say to people, you know, it's very good practice, very good practice to negotiate. <laughs> So as the highest number you can say without laughing. Can you smile though? Is, is a smile admitted? Maybe you could give a little cheeky wink. <laughs> <laughs> that works. Okay. Um, Barbara, what if your change is perceived by others as a step back? You know, how, how do you handle that? Actually, how do you cope with that yourself? It's not that much in handling, but yeah. Well, I think that depends a lot of who you are as a person, I guess, uh, if you really get affected by other people's opinion or not. But I think in general, um, you know, you are the only one who knows your circumstance. Uh, you are the only one. It's not the same do a career switch maybe in your own country that when you decide to move to a new country and a whole new context. And at the end of the day, um, Sometimes, as I mentioned earlier, you have to give a step back to can take impulse and keep going. And I think that's something that you need to consider when you decide, OK, I want to switch career that probably you will have to start from from the bottom. You won't you won't pretend if you want to change to be a marketing professional, that your first step into the marketing world will be as a marketing manager. That's just not realistic, probably. And you have to accept that sometimes, yeah there may be a, a bit of, of reduction on your on your paycheck but at the end of the day i think nobody should care about how much you earn unless they pay your bills and and because you said that the next question for hannah was if your dream job is a position where you need certain qualifications but you don't have them again it's a dream job should we still go for it should you still push until you get it so why not you know um you can always learn and maybe there's something else you bring to the table uh that in your interviews you can discuss with the employer and say okay i can bring this and i'm willing to learn this and maybe they'll help train you with those extra things um yeah definitely and and what are the biggest benefits you see from your clients after they've taken the plunge? And actually, do you have a, an example for us, maybe a, a really interesting, inspiring example from, from your clients? Mm -hmm. um, well, I mean, I think it definitely comes back to what we were saying at the beginning. It's, it's happiness. Um, I think for most clients I work with, there's a sense of relief, actually, and feeling more themselves um so yeah the, the nicest example is someone I've worked with in the past to create a business a new business and they were working in event management and they had this very stressful busy lifestyle um they'd really bought into all of the culture of the fashion world and the event world and they'd kind of morphed into this person that they were like I feel really cool 
um, <laughs> but I don't really know who I am anymore. So we worked together to step back and say, okay, what do you actually love? Uh, how do you want your lifestyle to be? And uh, they ended up just quitting actually and retraining as a dog groomer and then opened their own business. And there's just something lovely about seeing what they do now um, where they're so much truer to themselves. You see them posting on Instagram and um, kind of the way they talk about their business, the way that they talk about interacting with their clients. And you're just like, this is, this is you, like you are you at work. Um, so I think there's a real sense of relief and happiness there actually. Yeah, and and I mean the next uh, the next question is for everyone. How how did a career switch benefit you privately, professionally? Yeah, I think uh, to me particularly, it has opened a whole new world of possibilities. Has made me discover skills and abilities that I didn't knew it I had and and I could put into practice. And I also, for me, uh, uh, coming from a from a very strong uh, a professional background, it put me a bit uh, down to earth as well, because I think sometimes as professional, when you reach certain level and you have seen so much in your career and you know so much, you can tend to think, well, I have seen everything. I know everything. And no, I think one of the benefits of career change is that once you start with this path, there is always something new to learn. You're always going to meet people to learn from, and it really helps you to ground yourself and you can apply that to every area of your life. Uh, for example, I, I practice jujitsu and sometimes I feel like, you know, the first time you step in the mat, you are afraid because you have no idea what to do. And a career switch is, is a little bit the same. You know, when the first time you go into a new position, you're like, what I'm supposed to do. And there is a, a quote I really like, uh, if, some, if, if something feels like, you know, you don't know how to do it, just do it. Even if you are afraid, just go and do it and you will find your way. And, and that will be only beneficial for yourself and will bring you great, great results and also a, a sense of pride. Uh, and, and you can really be happy with yourself and the things you have achieved. Yeah. For me uh, personally, um, what was my main reason was becoming more myself. So the benefit for me is I'm more the person I want to be. And because in, uh, in the past, I was not feeling myself. I didn't felt uh, worthy and stuff like that. So it was for me necessary switching career just to be me and uh, do things I really want to do, uh, I really like to do. And that's for everybody that's, it's personal. Everybody has their own goals and wants and needs. Uh, so for me, it was important just to uh, be in a place where I can completely be myself and using my qualities, uh, my knowledge in the right way. Um, yeah. Mm. I'd, re I'd really build on what the other two are saying. I think it, it's it's really about coming back to yourself. And on top of what you've, what you've both said, for me, it was very much about dropping all the expectations that I created for myself or that culture had given me or that like my upbringing had made me think a career should be. Um, and just, it was a bit of a gift to myself. I feel like it's a kind of, it is a, it's a gift to yourself to say, you can do this like you have permission to actually follow what you want to do and do it um so yeah i think it's always more special than people actually realize that or think it will be and i think that's really beautiful and it's, it's a nice summary and i just wanted to add from from my side to that i think it's nice that barbara com compared this to to kind of taking up a new sport i think in a way it's also comparable to moving to, to a new country um, because when, when you do that, you just go into a complete unknown. And I think a lot of, you know, the people interact, we interact with every day are, are taking that risk. They are leaving their lives behind and they are moving to a completely entirely new place. I personally think this is a lot scarier than changing a job or a career because it goes into so many different layers and it has so much depth and impact in, into your own life. Uh, and, and, and everyone who does that is already very, very brave, but I think that the career is just the next step to, to come after that. 
Now, if you would, uh, if you'd give uh, the audience one tip regarding switching careers, what would that tip be? For me, I think the biggest thing is that if it's on your mind, then you owe it to yourself to at least explore it. And then at least you can make an informed decision because, and it's really about taking the pressure off. So I think we often feel like we have to set our sights on the thing and then make it happen, but take the pressure off and just say, I'm going to explore it. Start there. Yeah, nice, nice say. And I would say also get out of your safe space. It's mm -hmm. easier to stay in a situation that you're okay with, but you will maybe regret staying in your safe space and never tried it. And just follow your heart and believe it will let you to the place where you should be. I really believe in that. Uh, in addition to what Hannah and Maureen say, I will say uh, leave your ego behind, uh, stay humble, ask many questions as you can from the people around you and try to learn much as you can about your new profession and where you want to go. And, and to add to that, I suppose it's a bit of taking control as well. I think many, many of us somehow land into a certain job in a certain career, and then it snowballs from there, just like, like Maureen said, with, with retail. And then all of a sudden we're there for so long that we don't imagine anything else. So I, I suppose that that discovery journey that Hannah was talking about is a moment when you actually take control and take the steering wheel back and decide where, where you go from that point on. Um, these were all the questions we, we had as, as a summary. There was a lot about you know, self-confidence, a lot about motivation, but it's definitely about, about taking action and trying to make a plan and sticking with the plan and building on your own motivation and, yeah, and trying to envisage a, a future in which you actually are the person you want to become and, well, and already acting like it, like, like Hannah said, you know, with your social media profile, uh, with, you know, believing in yourself, like Maureen said, or like, you know, listening only to yourself, like Barbara said, and, and pushing through as much as possible. Um, it is now time for, for our Q&A session. We have a couple of questions that are, were asked. Uh, if, if you still have questions, there is still uh, time to ask them. Uh, I'll take them in, or in the order they arrived. I see here, um, a question that Barbara wanted to answer, are all career switches deliberate or mostly circumstantial? Yeah, I think, uh, of course, it, it really depends on the person because if you are forced to move from your country by any situation and you really don't want to do it, you probably will go into a career switch by the circumstance because you need to find a job to support yourself. Perhaps you were a doctor in your home country and then I don't know, something really bad happens and you are forced to leave to another country and you have to start in a retail job or cleaning or doing something very different. Then the circumstances are forcing you to, to go into a career switch. But I think when you decide to do a career switch in a conscious way, um, even, even if it's because you move country or whatever you decide, uh, you need to really sit and make a plan and think, okay, um, for instance, when I moved to the Netherlands, I knew it. I cannot work as a lawyer over there. I don't know the language. I don't know the law. And I wasn't willing to spend, again, 10 years as a, at the university getting my degree valid here. So I thought, well, I know I cannot work as a lawyer, but what else can I do? What else I, I like it? In which areas I'm, I'm good at? Um, what are my strongest skills? What I can use from my experience as a lawyer for a new challenge? And I think that's very, very important. Uh, that you really sit and be honest with yourself and put on paper or on, on a little notebook or whatever, you know, where I am now, where I'm coming from, where I want to get and where I want to go, and what are the tools I already have to get there. Now, if you think like, okay, I'm just going to move and let's see what happened, it will just end on disaster. So I really think it, it takes a lot of preparation and your own circumstance. Everybody has different circumstances. But in general, I think when you move by force it into into a, a to a new country is more likely that this career change will be forced but you can always get out of that career that you don't like or that job that you don't like and make the best out of it 
Thank you, Barbara. Um, the next question uh, is, and, and Hannah will reply this one. Um, I quit my job to get a higher degree and now I'm scared of entering the market again. I feel like I don't know what I want and it scares me to start over. What could this first step for me be? Uh, yes, so uh, I really feel you on this. I think it is really scary. Um, and I love the question of like the first step because I think the first step is really about identifying what scares you about it. So um, a really nice exercise to do, which actually isn't really nice. Sometimes you can just be like, ah, when you see everything on the page, <laughs> but to write a list of all the things that scare you about it. So is it, um, I'm scared I'll get rejected. I'm scared I won't be good enough. I'm scared I won't find a job that I like. I'm scared it won't be what I think it is. Write a list of all these things, take a step back, look at it and think, okay, this is all very understandable. Have some compassion with yourself. Um, and remember that you've done a really brave thing to actually go away and retrain and get a master's. That's amazing. So then if you're going to step back and think, how could I look at what this person is saying and what advice would I give them? What other perspectives could I bring to these fears? You can then write a list of all the other ways that you could look at this. If that's too hard to do just on your own, maybe it's nice to have a conversation with someone you trust or a career consultant or someone you're working with about that. Um, but I would say find ways to create a bit of wiggle room in that fear. Um, yeah. Thank you, Hannah. And the next question is almost building up on this one. How do you cope with rejection? You want to switch, but employers, potential employers are not listening. How do you keep motivated in your goal? Yeah, so um, the rejection thing is also really hard, especially when you really, really want something. And when you're coming at it fresh as well and new. Um, but I think the thing with rejection in these cases is it's often not really about you. And I know that's an easy thing to say, but there will often be employers looking for something that maybe they're just not um, seeing. And that's not that you don't have it. It's just that it's not matching in the middle. So I think the thing with rejection is actually that it's the most wonderful lesson because you can learn from it. You can you can ask and say, well, what what did I not communicate there or what did you not receive from me? And hopefully they'll come back to you and tell you. And then you've got the door to say, OK, well, I can actually show you this or you can decide, OK, I don't have that. So now I've learned something and now I can go to the next thing with some more information. But I'd say use rejection as a tool for yourself. as like a bit of a gift for yourself. And remember that it's not about you personally, it's, yeah, it's more of a tool. Um, and here's a, here's a more of a comment that, uh, that Maureen would like to add on. People usually when they get to a certain age, uh, they don't want to change career simply because they are thinking they are too old for that without realizing that they still have a really, really long time to, to work. And that combines with another question that I see later on. Uh, what is uh, what is too late to actually do a, a career switch? Yeah, now for me, I am 41. So <laughs> to answer that question, and I also thought I was too old uh, for uh, switching careers. And then it will come back on that note, like, yeah, it's easier for me to stay in retail because I'm assured for a good job, but it's really not where my heart belongs. Uh, so it was a big uh, insecurity for me, but 40 is the new 20. So <laughs> it's all about, I think, how you feel. And if I look at the people who are working at my, uh, at my job, they all around, that age and some of them working there for two years, some for 10. I don't think it's really a matter anymore uh, for switching careers uh, your age. I think, but that's, I'm, I'm a dreamer and I believe anything is possible uh, as long if you're willing to take actions and are you willing to put some energy uh, into it. Thank you, that's very inspiring. Um, 
We'll take one more question, um, but if there are unanswered questions that you want us to, to reply to, please send an email to social at adamsrecruitment.com and we'll try to make sure that your answers will, uh, will come from there. The last question is for Barbara. Barbara, the skills needed to be a lawyer seem to be very different to what you need in a commercial role. Uh, which of your skills were easily transferable and did you focus on this when switching jobs? Yes, well, to be honest, are not so different because as a lawyer, I used to work independently by my own. So you really need to sell yourself. You really need to sell the service you are offering as, as a lawyer. Every time a new client or a new potential client came into my office and tell me, hey, I have this problem. Can you help me? It wasn't just a matter like, yeah, I know how to help you and I'm your best option to help you. So um, I think being a lawyer gives you a lot of uh, communication skills. You need to listen to your client. You need to also be honest and open uh, with your client in terms of the possibilities and, and what is feasible and what is not feasible. And I think being now in a commercial role as business development, um, I'm able to tell a client uh, whether or not their, their expectations are realistic. I'm able to see it and listen what the client needs and really understand because it's for me, it's not only listening what the client is saying, it's also listening what is behind, what he's saying underneath. Um, and all those skills are really comparable of being a lawyer. Also, when I was recruiter, it really helped me to understand uh, the candidate, what the candidate expectations were. And I think at the end of the day, um, between communication and knowing how to sell myself to my target audience has been really, really helpful and transferable for business development and, and my commercial career now. Thank you so much, Barbara. And yeah, I mean, thank you all for, for the answers and for detailing all and, you know, taking us through all your stories. Definitely very, very inspiring. I think it's really important to note at the end, in addition to everything that was said that you're not alone in this journey. I mean, obviously it is your own journey and you'll have to make the most out of it on your own terms. Uh, but you are not alone. You'll have, you know, you'll have someone like Hannah there to to put everything, you know, that that you need in practice and then help you get where you want to be. Uh, you'll have, uh, uh, you know, people like the recruiters we have here at Adams that have already spoken to candidates that are in your position, um, that know how to ask you the right questions in such way that we will determine what the skills are and also that have access to the clients that would be able to give, uh, give you that opportunity based on, on the trust that has been built throughout the years. Because I think at the end of the day, trust is the word that came a lot throughout this conversation, trusting you know, in yourself and your skills, but also working with people that you can trust along the, the journey as well. Um, and on that, uh, on that note, I hope this was helpful. Uh, I hope uh, you know, it's gonna, you know, make some people go and, and take some action on, on their own journey now. Uh, we hope we'll hear your story. So if you do want to help to share why this was helpful with you or, you know, what's the next step you're going to do. Uh, I'm sure Hannah will want to know what, what that first step is. Uh, I would like to thank our panelists, Maureen, Hannah and, and Barbara for today. And, and thank all of you, the participants for listening to us and sharing uh, your questions with us. You can still email them at after the, the webinar if you want. Uh, and I'd like to thank our colleagues behind the scenes, uh, Jennifer, Della and Teofania for actually putting everything together for us to, to make this work today. Thank you so much. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you, everybody. Bye, everyone. Bye, thanks. Bye. Bye.